Welcome back to Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. We cleared out the Blue Moon Root Split last time, so now we're going to be heading out to the Green Earth Root Split, starting with Captain Drake Max. I want to cover the Max route first, because it's one that I rarely see, and from what I've seen of these maps online, they look pretty interesting. So Max is navigate through a sea of fog where Drake's navy lies in wait. This, from what I can tell, is pretty similar to Olaf's navy, except it's vertical rather than horizontal. So, I feel like the dialogue here should be mostly the same, because here's the thing, I've never actually seen the story dialogue for the Max Green Earth missions. What? Yeah, so this is the same. Uh. That's the same. <laughs> oh, that's different though, why does Max get all the fun? Oh yeah! So yeah, this one is not a capture map at all, this one is pretty much just a very straightforward head-to-head -head combat map, and as you can see here too, uh, it's a pretty small map as well. I think it's um, thinner horizontally than it is vertically, but yeah, we're basically heading straight down here to deal with Drake's Armada. Okay, so as always, Max's direct combat bonus means that uh, even fighting at sea, Max is ridiculous and his cruisers one-shot subs. Now, Drake doesn't have a whole ton of subs in this map, but something you do have to be careful of is that, uh, yeah, it takes exactly two sub kills to fully charge his power. And he, ha he has battleships, uh, too. Speaking of these battleships, though, uh, I had an attempt at this previously where I just barely missed the S rank because I failed technique entirely because there was a battleship down here that I didn't see coming. If it weren't for that one battleship, I easily would have got an S rank. In fact, I would have got a perfect S rank, so, uh, yeah, that... That was a pain, so hopefully I'm gonna be, uh... I'm gonna be doing things a little better this time. And the annoying thing is Max's battleships still have lower range. But at the same time... Okay. Now this lander is actually the reason why I failed technique last time, because basically you don't want to unload on this shore, because that's in range of the battleship. And the lander dying meant that I lost two units at once, which is not great. Now just in case Drake sends some things around here, I guess I can put the rocket there. And then the cruiser, see, see here's the thing, like the cruisers, the cruisers need to protect the battleships. The uh, battleships need to protect the subs from enemy cruisers, and the subs have to protect the cruisers. There's kind of a triangle of naval unit effectiveness in uh, in Advance Wars, which is which is kind of cool, to be honest. Now's the time. And as always, Drake says the exact same thing. Drake is still Advance Wars one Drake, which means I don't really like him all that much. Okay, that cruiser went in the reef. That sub went there and dove. Okay, we've got some battleships advancing. Okay, right. So. Uh, if I if I attack this battleship with the sub, then I'll be able to scout out that other sub and kill it with the cruiser. The problem is, it means that this sub is going to be exposed to the enemy cruisers. And I'm not quite in range for my own battleships to deal with those cruisers because... Max. Yeah, that is a slight issue. So, to that effect, this is the problem, I kind of wish this was Days of Ruin, where our cruisers could actually do chip damage to other naval units. I mean, I guess I can actually scout out... hmm... Although I do really want to damage that battleship, otherwise my cruisers are in trouble, and so are all of my other units. Because if I scout out the sub this way... There it is. Now I get to kill it with the cruiser from above. I need to get rid of the subs, obviously, because otherwise my battleships are in danger. Speaking about my battleships being in danger, Drake does have one more sub in the wings that I need to watch out for. But he does have a cruiser in there that I can't actually hit with anything, which is the problem. So I almost wonder whether I should actually play more cautiously here and just hold back some stuff. He... yeah, he's lost two subs, so he is getting squalled. Like, I could try and just put this battleship in here, which I might actually do. 
And if I move this battleship too far forward, I know that Drake does have his own sub that's like around here or so. And I didn't see it dive, so I have no idea where it is right now. Oh yeah, I have this sub too. Okay, wait, I should stop canceling moves in fog, but at the same time, if this sub goes this way, you may... I did not realize there were two land tiles there. Well, no, you won't be able to scout that battleship next turn. The thing is, right now I really only need one cruiser. I, I just need to be able to deal with the other sub as it comes. Okay, you'll go there. I do want to take the wind out of his battleship sails a little bit. At least one of them. Especially while his power meter is already full. But if I do that, I'm essentially giving up both my subs. And I suppose I can move this cruiser like, oh no no, I can't move that cruiser here because the other battleship will be able to shoot it. That's just on the very edge of its range, which means that it goes all the way up to here. Can't get in that one's minimum range without the other I, I can get in this one's minimum range though. So, let's suppose I do that. Uh, I guess I will hit this battleship. This means I'm likely to lose two subs this turn, but as long as I don't lose any more than that, I'm probably good. Okay, I'm gonna put the transport there. Oh, it rained, okay. Yeah, this... Oh, snow! Okay. Anchors away. So this does actually have random rain or snow. I've never actually seen it snow before, and that's a good and a bad thing. The good thing is, it means that maybe his cruisers can't get to my subs, and his sub might not be able to get to me. The bad thing is, it means that my next turn is going to be horribly blunted. Yeah, that's just the 3 HP one. It's more likely to rain on these maps, thanks to their random weather and Drake having the rain bonus in random weather, so... Yeah, I, I guess I got lucky that I didn't get snow in Sammy's version of Captain Drake. Oh, that's a lot of my vision gone. Which is really bad. Interesting. Now the problem here is I have no idea where his other sub is now. Because like, in a sense I kind of prefer his other sub to attack my battleship on this turn. Because then I at least know where it is and I can kill it. But I've got no clue where that other sub is at this point. So the snow has made things weird now. Especially since my subs are now really stuck in terms of where they can go. So this might weirdly be a max force where I have to spend most of my turn hitting with indirects. I do know though that during max force, Max's subs actually do a decent job against uh, Drake's cruisers. Aha, and I can actually reach a few of them. The problem is I can't even think about killing that cruiser this turn. So okay then, let's hit this. Okay, it's on like 4.5, and it did survive, but it barely took any damage in return. Yeah, even like during Max Force, Max's subs can create a bit of a scissors cuts rock situation where they get to wreck their counter unit. So I get to kill this. That goes under. And again, I have these two cruisers here that aren't really going to be able to do a whole ton. Except maybe block off this battleship from going anywhere. So now you unload the rocket. Now the good news is that because it was inside the lander, it actually didn't uh, get hit by the power, so it's on full health. So yeah, I'm actually very nervous right now. How many units have I lost? Oh, I've, I've only lost one. And snow's gone, okay then. Yep. Because, yeah, the thing about rain is while it does reduce fog of war vision. Oh, there's the sub, okay. It also means, like, it doesn't actually reduce movements on water, so Drake doesn't actually gain any benefits from it raining on this map. Okay, that's just a 3 HP battleship. I was worried for a second. I was like, you better not have another 10 HP battleship that I don't know about. 
Oh, and his sub got trapped. Great. Okay, now I can kill the sub, even though my cruisers are only at 7 HP. They are still max cruisers, so they're going to be doing a lot. The problem is that Drake is now out of power mode, which means that if I'm not careful, he's going to get another squall. Because two subs is all it takes, or, you know, a sub and part of a battleship and part of two cruisers. And yeah, may as well kill this off with my cruisers, because they don't have anything else to shoot. And you're gonna go to a place where I know for a fact you'll be able to hit the battleship. Yeah, I, I still have a whole ton of, uh... Actually, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, I can actually kill this with my own battleship. And now this sub can... Like I, need, I need one of my subs to attack the cruiser, but then this thing can go... I just, I want to scout out his other battleship as soon as I possibly can, because otherwise it's going to take me a little while to actually finish this, and I don't think this is going to really kill. Or is it? We'll see. Oh, it did kill, okay. That's nice. But, uh, he, oh, he doesn't actually have Squall again, good. Right, uh, my rocket's there. This guy goes down here. Yep, there's his other battleship. And... Yeah, see, here's the thing. If I go too close, he shoots at me. But if I go just far enough away, because he only has two vision, I believe if I, if I go here, he can't see me. So that's good to know. And now this guy is going to start heading towards... I do need to be really careful, because if this lander dies, then I am actually screwed, because that's two deaths for my power, my technique ranking. Okay, day four. Alright. Oh, you are about to be washed away, Drake. And yep, yeah, he couldn't see me. So that's another great thing about the AI not cheating in Fog of War. Like, like I, I, again, I have heard that it does kind of cheat in terms of like knowing where your hidden units are. But if this was the original, Drake would have still been able to shoot this battleship because uh, in the original, the AI has full vision to everywhere except woods, reefs, and hidden subs. Whereas now, because they obey the uh, normal fog rules, again, this battleship couldn't shoot me because it couldn't see me. So you actually can, like, really play strategically around enemy vision ranges, which you could not do in the original game. So this should be Drake's last unit. And that means we don't have to endure another squall. And uh, there we go. A job well done. And his dialogue at the end of this mission is exactly the same. Ah. From what I remember. I'm unstoppable on land or at sea. Max does have a new voice clip, and yet there we go. So, um... <laughs> Uh, I got a perfect S rank that time, but I'm going to show some footage, I guess you can consider this a fail channel, from my first attempt of this, where, because of that one battleship killing my lander while it still had an infantry in it, uh, well, you'll see. And this, okay, yeah, once again, I'm just going to island hop this rocket. The good news is that my infantry is safe inside the transport, which means don't be a holy out of 10 HP battleship. Ah, uh, that sucks. That really sucks. I'm unstoppable on land or at sea. I mean, actually, that is very true. Oh, oh, just barely not an S rank. Okay then, I'm actually a little impressed at that. But yeah, Captain Drake with Mac. It's a very short and breezy mission, but it's also kind of fun. It's just a pretty much straight up slugfest. The Max Green Earth missions are, I suppose, kind of easy mode compared to the Sandy one, which is sort of hard mode, and Andy, which is somewhere in the middle. But that is Captain Drake defeated, and I will see you all next time for Max's version of Naval Clash, which is also quite an interesting one.